Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to talk about a change in the way that I do things and why this change is being done and how all of you can help because this is something where I do need the help of the more generous members of my audience, people who are generous with their time, information, and knowledge. So I used to do a lot of repair videos on this channel. If you take a look, I've done over 626 edited board repair videos. On the main channel, I have something like 189 live streams, and that's just the ones I remember to put into a playlist. And I also have, on my other live channel, about another four or 500 board repair videos, something like 1,200 or 1,300 board repair videos when you add them all up. And a lot of these board repair videos are videos where I'm trying to teach you a mindset, not just when you have this problem, do that, but rather a mindset so that you could solve the problem yourself. However, if you are looking for a solution to a specific problem, watching a video that is two hours and five minutes long for the 5% chance that I may have solved your problem inside of that video is not a particularly efficient way to solve a specific problem. And since I've done over a thousand videos teaching you the general mindset of how I do things and how to approach diagnostic open-ended component level electronics repair, I'm trying to do something that's a little bit more useful, which is get all of the specific information on how to do specific repairs and specific diagnostics for specific models out of the heads of all of these smart people that do these repairs and into a place that is a centralized database easy to search, easy to index, and easy to read. So these are the types of articles that I'm working on now rather than doing repair videos. If you take a look at repair.wiki, you can find pages like this. So if you have an A122338 MacBook board, no power, five volts, stuck at 0.00 to 0.05 amps, then you can take a look and here are the common causes, here are the things that could be shorted, here are the diagnostic steps that you should take to try to solve it. We also have things like this over here. If the charger is stuck at five volts instead of 20 volts, here are the specific things that can be causing it on that machine with citations. If you have a question mark folder or it doesn't see the SSD, there are all the different things that can cause that. We even include helpful little pictures over here that can give you an idea as to what's going on. Now, the problem as I see it is that the information is out there, but it's hidden. Some of it is on an IRC channel somewhere that you can't see the rest of unless you're already there. Some of it is in a private Facebook group that you can't search. Some of it may be on a private Google group, or some of it may just be inside the head of a person who's socially awkward, who doesn't know how to share information, or doesn't really care to share the information with other people that they meet. And the problem is this information is out there and that information could lead to devices working again that don't currently work, but the information is stuck inside of a content silo. And the same way that Futo is trying to attack traditional content silos when it comes to social media and censorship and everything else, I am also trying to attack the idea of a private closed to the public content silo for repair information. I want there to be a place like this where high quality repair information that is vetted by repair professionals exists and is there to be able to give you very detailed information on how to fix very difficult problems. What differentiates this from something like I fix it, there's nothing wrong with I fix it. I fix it is saying, here's how to replace the charge port on your phone. Here's how to replace a power button. And this is saying, here is how to fix your SSD circuit when it's not being recognized recognized at component level. So it's digging in a little bit deeper and going into problems that are, you know, typically the problems that you just don't see covered on the iFixit site. And it's also something that's being vetted on a regular basis by repair professionals. Now, this is being supported and funded by the Futo Legendary Grant that I got two years ago. I now work at an organization called Futo. For anybody who wonders what is a Futo and no, Futa is not Futo. Don't get me started on that shit. I did a video here answering that. What is Fudo? You have a job. I thought you had a business. They have a grants program. And I was recipient number one of the original Futo legendary grant back in 2020. And I am using that not just for repair advocacy work to educate people on repair, to interface with the FTC and so on and so forth. But we're also using this in addition to trying to push right to repair to also push repair education, to fund the creation of quality guides like this so that you have the opportunity to learn from these types of professionals without having to try and search all the dark corners of the internet. Now, the ways that you can help are twofold. The first way that you could help is by making a donation, and I'll leave a link down below. But admittedly, I'll be honest with you, that's not exactly what I'm interested in at this point in time. The funding that this has will eventually run out, but uh, the funding is not the issue right now so much as the recruiting. 
What we're looking for are people to contribute, repair information, and if you have information that is incredibly detailed, like what's written over here by this gentleman, like what's written over here on this guide or on this guide over here, and you have it for devices where there is a demand for repairs for them because people are looking to fix these en masse and the information is missing, we are open to paying you to contribute. And you can email lewis at fighttorepair.org. I'll include the email down below if you are open to contributing this type of information. The problem I am looking to solve here is that all of this type of repair information, which is incredibly useful and very good, is typically hidden behind some sort of content silo where it is difficult to find. And I want this information to be out there and easier to find. So that the me of 15 years ago, if he wanted to fix something like this, instead of having to spend five years banging his head against the wall trying to figure everything out from scratch, would have a better starting point. I don't want to prevent people from using their brains altogether. I do want people to learn. And that's why we have all of these repair videos going over the mindset and necessary to be able to do these types of repairs properly, the procedures, and everything else. But I also want you to have a better starting point than, oh, you want to learn how to do this? Okay. Watch 80 hours of content and then come back. I believe that's going to lead to a lot of devices out there not being repaired when they otherwise would have been repaired if the information that already exists were available in a more readily available fashion. Now, to why, okay, why can't you do both at the same time? This is a very common question. Why can't you create board repair videos and simultaneously also work on the repair wiki? Several reasons for that. Number one, if I can be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of it. Have you ever eaten at the same pizzeria every day for nine years? Probably gets boring after a while, doesn't it? I did my first uh, repair video on this channel in 2013. I mean, you know, it's, it's 2022. <laughs> it gets kind of old to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. As I said, 626 edited board repair videos, 189 live streams in the main channel, and about three to 500 board repairs on the live channel. That's over 1,200 repair videos. I mean, that, that's a lot of the same thing. Now, the problem that I'm having with board repair videos is threefold. There's little interest from my audience, there's little interest from me, and they don't pay. If I really enjoyed doing them, but my audience hated them and I made no money, I'd do it. If I really didn't like doing them anymore, but my audience loved them and it didn't pay, I'd do it. If I didn't like doing it and my audience didn't like doing it, but it paid well, I'd do them. The problem is this. When I make a board repair video, I'm just not into it the way I was before because I've done it for over nine years. The audience also isn't into it because when I produce a new board repair video and I log into my analytics, I typically tend to lose 250 to 500 subscribers the day I've done the board repair video and then I will lose an additional one to 400 subscribers the day after I do the board repair video. And the repair video usually makes one to three dollars. So if even one of those three things were true, I could do the board repair video. But because you're not interested in them, I've kind of gotten bored of them and they don't pay. It really doesn't make sense for me to put time into doing something that you don't want to watch that I've kind of gotten bored of that doesn't pay. And I already have content that pretty much goes over this ad nauseum literally 1,200 times. So what I'm looking to do now is, again, just create stuff that is much more easily usable. Like if somebody shows up and says, hey, I have an iPhone 8 and it's doing this. You don't have to watch 300 hours of content in the hopes that one of those videos at three hours and 50 seconds into it may have a solution to your problem or search 80 different Facebook groups and IRC and where Google groups and Russian forums and all this other crap. You can literally just go to one place and okay, problem on the left, bootless looping error nine, solution on the right like that, and that you could learn in that fashion. I think this is probably going to be a much more convenient thing going forward. The reason I'm doing this video is because I think it's important to point out that just because this channel has returned from whence it came, which is angry man yelling at camera from chair, angry man yelling at camera from chair, that that doesn't mean that I've stopped my work on repair education. I'm actually moving forward with it with more resources, more help, more people and more data and more educational material than I ever have in the past. And if you are open to contributing to this, I will be humbled and honored to have you be a part of this particular project. Again, I would like to say 
Thank you very much to Futo for making this all possible with the grant that I got two years ago. And thank you to everybody else who has made donations to this. And above all, thank you very much to the people who've made donations of their time, knowledge, and resources, because all of that is necessary to make these guides possible. And I'm hoping that as this project continues to move forward, that we will continue to destroy that idea that if repair information is shared, that this is somehow damaging to repair shops. I have heard this nonstop for the past 10 years. If this information is shared, then all the repair shops are gonna go out of business because everybody will know how to fix things themselves. And it's like, I, I've been, I feel like my existence has been disproving this for a decade. I feel like this industry's very rapid growth has been disproving this over the past six to 10 years, but that is still something that is in the minds of the people in here. I think that growing the a number of devices overall that are able to be fixed is much more important than a small group of people hoarding all the repairs for themselves that admittedly at the end of the day, they're probably not gonna be able to do all of them anyway. Another thing I'm going to mention here, this nonprofit does not pay me a dime in salary. I do not receive compensation as a result of working for Repair Preservation Group. This money is used for the mission. This money is used to maintain the wiki. This money is used to pay the higher level contributors that are contributing really good guides so that we can continue to get these contributions into the future, but that money is not going to me. I believe that there is a lot of cynicism out there towards the nonprofits. Admittedly, a lot of it is well-founded because you'll have these nonprofits where they don't really seem to do anything, but the directors are making three hundred dollars to $900,000 a year. I understand that that cynicism exists. And I understand that if I want to be a part of removing that cynicism, paying myself a salary is really not the way to go about doing it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.